Welcome everyone. Today I would like to talk about the topic of network optimization and I would like to place this topic in the context of uh, analytics and visualization. The reason for this is because we believe that it's oftentimes not enough to solve one model. We need to create uh, valuable information around the model such that we can in the end properly support uh, decision making. So the outline of this presentation is as follows. I will give a brief introduction to analytics optimization and networks. Then I will talk a little bit about uh, building op network optimization models using the AIMS modeling system. I will try to touch a little bit on how to deal with complexity and uncertainty in these kind of models. And finally, I will um, present a little bit uh, about uh, network planning application that we have seen in our work and which can illustrate the purpose of this topic. So a brief introduction to analytics, optimization and networks. Um, analytics is the new trend and the big promise is to make better decisions based on data analysis. I won't go into many details regarding this, but uh, I think it's important to make the distinction between uh, predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics. Um, AIMS is mainly involved in prescriptive analy and analytics and namely by means of optimization, but we will also um, provide some support for uh, predictive uh, data analysis. So AIMS is mainly active in the optimization area where, of course, by, by using optimization, uh, many companies can get a competitive edge compared with companies who do not use optimization. And I would like to go now a little bit deeper into the area of uh, network flows, <coughs> which is an area with solid theory rich collections of algorithms and uh, a vast uh, collection of applications. Um, eventually, network models use modeling and optimization and this is where AIMS as a modeling system and solution platform can play a key role. So, a few words about AIMS modeling system for people who are not yet familiar. So. The system has mainly three parts, uh, model building part, and on the top of that, graphical user, inter uh, the graphical user interface, interface, and underneath, we have the links to all uh, uh, popular solvers. Um, AIMS, uh, of course, has uh, an integrated development environment which provides a lot of uh, tools not only to formulate your model but also manage your model, all kind of information around your model, and also um, AIMS provides uh, both a Windows user interface as well as a web user interface where both inputs and outputs of your optimization model can be visualized. So the next topic is, the next uh, part is about uh, building network models using AIMS. And of course uh, there is a lot to tell about this, but uh, I would like to give a few examples just to touch on the main ideas uh, behind building these kind of models. So the first example is a very simple example, a uh, network optimization model uh, in which we have uh, arcs and nodes and uh, um, we can edit uh, the properties of both arcs and nodes and we can formulate behind a generic network model uh, based on uh, generic node and generic arc concepts in AIMS. Basically, um, every generic arc 
will introduce a variable in your model and every generic node will imply a constraint in a model. Um, and of course, these kind of models uh, have also an equivalent uh, linear programming formulation. So exactly the same model can be then formulated using explicit uh, constraints, like the node balance constraints we are showing here, or explicit, explicitly declared variables like the, the arc map, uh, where the flow, um, uh, the flow variable over uh, each arc. Um, so this is just the, the, the basic formulation of a network model. And um, of course, if we uh, focus on the LP uh, reformulation, like we show here, so this is solvable by using standard solvers like CPLEX, uh, either by using standard uh, linear programming method or in some cases, you can even choose um, for CPLEX to run a network algorithm followed by either primal or dual um, CPLEX. The next example that I would like to show is from the area of facility location models. Again, this is a, a relatively simple model. Although if we scale up the data, the same model can be applied to large data sets. But here we have a simple model um, where we have a number of uh, plants that have to supply regions and the layer in between the, in, in the network is uh, consists of uh, uh, distribution uh, depots distribution centers. So the facility location problem means that we would like to locate um, these uh, distribution centers at a number of given possible locations such that we would like to uh, serve all the regions uh, by the supply provided by the plants. And of course uh, Distribution centers also have uh, capacity, so we have to comply with uh, throughput capacity constraints. Uh, more specifically, uh, we have uh, in this model so a formulation where the flow um, is modeled using uh, the, the index of commodity. So this is a multi-commodity network flow problem. And at the same time, uh, three indices for the three layers in the network, uh, plant, distribution centers, and region. And this is a, a very specific choice for, for how to declare the flow variable using these indices. This implies also a certain way of formulating our constraints. So for example, supply constraints which you see above here uh, specifies that for each commodity and each product plant, production plant, the total amount shipped to customer regions via distribution centers cannot be more than the available production capacity. And maybe also uh, this additional supply variable that we have at here. So the choice of indices here, the choice of a plant, distribution center, and a region here uh, implies a certain uh, way of formulating the supply constraints. In a similar way, we can discuss how we formulate the, the demand constraint, which says that the demand for each commodity in each region should be supplied by all plants, but only through the chosen distribution centers. Of course, um, the variable that uh, um, indicates whether or not a distribution center is or is chosen or not. That is a binary variable. So we have here a mixed integer programming formulation. And the same um, explanation could be applied to a uh, balance throughput constraint. Uh, so here, depending on, so for every distribution center, the total throughput 
it was the total accumulated amount of all regions served by this center and uh, also a maximum throughput constraint which says that for each distribution center the total volume of commodities it to be delivered to its uh, customer region should be below the maximum allowed throughput. So we have a capacitated uh, facility location problem. Um, just to give an idea how this works in Ames, I can uh, now demo uh, this project. So we have <coughs> We have this project, and um, here you can recognize uh, the model explorer progress window that shows information from the solver, and we have the graphical user interface, so the three main components of the system. Uh, if we open the demo page, we see a number of objects. The main object is, of course, the network object you see in the center. So we can initialize the data and solve the problem and then we see the solution in the network. You see that the chosen distribution centers have been highlighted here. Of course, uh, this is just one run and if we would like to experiment a bit with what happens if we allow or do not allow certain distribution centers, for example, we can disable uh, distribution center 5 and then resolve the problem and then we would get a, sol a different solution with a different objective value and a different uh, flow in the network of course. Also, um, so if we allow all centers but now we say that for example initial supply uh, initial supply here we change it to 1 instead of 15 and we try to solve the problem, then we see that the solver cannot find the solution to this problem because we have now too little supply. So the formulation also allows us, by means of this check, to allow for additional supply in the network. So now if we allow additional supply and we solve the problem, then we get of course a solution where the additional supply uh, is computed that is necessary to satisfy all uh, demand. So um, this is a very, again a very simple example, but I think it, it illustrates the main ideas behind facility location models and um, also the possibilities to perform what-if analysis on these kind of models. So let me uh, continue with uh, the presentation. Yet another example of uh, network models that I would like to show is uh, models for petrochemical processes so uh, more specifically processes where different uh, fractions like naphtha are fed into different uh, in various uh, facilities and then they are separated in uh, many uh, so-called crack gas components in this kind of models, uh, the formulation of the network problem is different than what we've seen so far. So uh, it could be that um, in some parts of the network, the best formulation is to have a flow variable which goes from uh, the unit, unit from a source to a sink, but at the same time, so this would be the total flow uh, on that arc. But at the same time, we are dealing here with various uh, components, uh, various commodities, so uh, we can in that case use um, another variable unit composition which depends on the unit, so H0, but at the same time it says uh, what is the composition of each uh, commodity or component that uh, is available at that unit. So if we have these two variables together, total flow and unit composition in each node, node, that is one way to deal with this kind of pro 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 processes uh, models. <laughs> At the same time, uh, what we see often is that in these processes uh, we have to do with uh, nodes that have a typical separation behavior. 
So we get a number of components coming in and uh, a number of components going out, and there is a so-called separation matrix that gives uh, the amounts, so the, the the balance between the input and output amount. So that that's something that can be captured by such a separation constraint. We see here, this is a separation unit and all the units uh, that are uh, receiving flow from this unit, and see do you see it's here the the effect uh, gas components of the commodity index and what we get out of that unit is depending on what comes into that unit and then apply to it uh, this separation matrix another yet another way of uh, or another type of unit in this kind of models is for example a transformation unit where you get some components in and there is a chemical process going on and like a hydrogenation process and you have a number of components going out. So in a similar way we can formulate uh, this kind of constraint. <laughs> okay, so we, we've seen uh, some examples of uh, network models. Um, how uh, can we deal with model building uh, in AIMS in different situations? And next, we would like to uh, discuss a little bit how to deal with complexity and uncertainty in this kind of models. <coughs> okay, one example is uh, we have uh, a distribution uh, problem, production distribution problem where uh, data is multidimensional. For example, here we have a network that not only depends on the commodity, but also on the time element. So we would like to have a multi-period uh, network planning problem where we have mul multiple periods. So what we have, the situation we have in one period uh, depends on the history up to that moment. <laughs> so. Uh, this is an example where uh, we can deal with uh, visualizing the multidimensional network data, for example, by using selection uh, objects in the graphical user interface. So in this example, we can just make a selection for demand scenario that we would like to show and for the time period that we would like to show. And for this selection of our um, scenario and the time period, then we can show the result, resulting network situation on the map. Furthermore, um, on the map we can uh, select an arc and uh, this will make a reverse link to some other mod model elements that are then used in other objects. Uh, in this way we can create a link between uh, uh, the objects that we show, such that when we make a selection in the network, we also update the information about the source and the sync of the arc in the in the tables that and and the, the bar chart that we have next to it. So this is one way we can deal with multi-dimensional um, data when we would like to visualize um, the results. So more specifically in this situation, uh, we have uh, elements that are mentioned on this slide. So we have production, stocks, and distribution variables. We have a demand which is uncertain, and therefore we consider uh, stochastic scenarios for demand. And at the same time, we have the time element, and we won't solve the entire problem for all the time periods at once, but we can decompose this using a rolling horizon approach and then um, solve it uh, step by step. And in that, we have, in that approach, we have uh, specific uh, functionalities in names that can create uh, timetables for you that are then fed into the model that is being solved at, at each uh, uh, role during the rolling horizon approach. Another example that I would like to give is network design model um, in, it, in a simple form. This can be formulated like we see here. So we have an on-directive graph and we have number of commodities 
and uh, for each commodity we have origin and destination. We have capacities on each arc and then um, the goal is to find the cheapest capacity on each arc such that we can, in the resulting network, we can satisfy each demand. So in the example network that you see at the bottom, uh, we have two products with uh, demand two for each of them. And on the arcs you see the potential capacities. <coughs> so a solution, a simple solution to this problem would look like this. One commodity goes through, so the green commodity goes through these two arcs, but that means that the other one can only use partly this arc, so it will have to use also the arc below given the capacities. Um, ma mathematically, this problem can be formulated using the mixed integer programming the model, which is pretty simple and it looks like this. Uh, what I would like to mention about this problem is that this is amenable to uh, the composition approach. So if the network problem is very large, then we can apply um, a vendor decomposition approach to this problem. And uh, this decomposition approach is actually fully automated in AIMS. So you can use uh, specifically designed functions like the GMP functions for vendor decomposition to apply to this problem. And it's worth mentioning that vendor decomposition on these kind of problems can uh, outperform the existing solvers. So, next example uh, for dealing with uh, complexity and uncertainty is from the area of flexibility in manufacturing networks. This is uh, an area where um, we are talking about uh, plants that can produce uh, certain products, like for example, plants that produce cars, and it's a big issue how to specialize each plant in each type of product. Um, so this is the issue of flexibility and the big claim is that if you have such a tool flexibility like we see in this picture, uh, that can give the same benefits uh, as the full flexibility where every plant can produce every product. Okay, now when, when demand for products is uncertain, then this problem is amenable to a robust optimization approach. Uh, in the sense that which links should be in the network, which links should we add to the network, um, those are binary decisions that can be uh, non-adjustable decisions in our robust uh, approach, whereas the actual production, so how much flow we will have on each arc, can be, non -adjust can be adjustable decisions depending on, on the values of demand. So if demands are um, supposed to belong to a certain uh, region, like uh, polyhedral, uh, then uh, this kind of problem is amenable to a robust optimization approach, and uh, the message is, as before, uh, robust optimization is fully automated in AIMS, so it's again possible to use uh, specialized GMP functions, like generate robust counterpart, and that robust counterpart model once generated can be then solved using uh, standard solvers. And specifically in this situation, what we've seen that with robust optimization, we can get qualitative, qualitatively different solutions and better solutions uh, if we evaluate them against the uncertain demands using, for example, a simulation approach compared with a solution only based on deterministic values of demand. <coughs> so once we have built the model and uh, we deal also with complexity and uncertainty in the model, we would like, of course, to move one step forward and to build an actual application. So applying optimization with aims um, most of the times is an iterative and interactive process. So first we build a model, 
then we import data from different sources. We use powerful solvers to construct uh, our solution approach, and then we build a graphically user interface around model. And this process then goes on and on until we reach a state that is uh, deployed uh, either using uh, the Windows uh, user interface or the web user interface, and uh, either locally or uh, gently using uh, a server. So once we are done with application building, it's worth mentioning that uh, the application can be deployed using the AIMS Pro. And the idea behind this is that we would be able to build so-called enterprise app stores. This would allow for easy deployment, flexible and fast development. And it's just one platform for optimization apps required by a certain organization, accessible anywhere and anytime. Next, um, we can even build a web user interface around our network optimization model, like you see in this picture. And um, this is enabling uh, optimization to run in everyone's browser. This is the next step in the deployment process. Um, the topic of, uh, of uh, building a web user interface around your AIMS optimization model has been discussed extensively in one of our previous uh, webinars for which the, the, the recording is available on our website. <laughs> Once we have uh, built the applications and uh, we have a, uh, an approach to deploy them, um, we can now illustrate uh, some applications of network planning uh, based on AIMS, such that, for example, supply chain optimization. So this is an application where we have uh, different raw materials uh, and uh, they have to be shipped uh, through different layers of the network, uh, especially warehouses, in such a way that they serve both internal and external markets. And, um, well, these kind of applications, they illustrate all the typical uh, issues that arise in the supply chain problem. For example, it can be solved um, using a uh, rolling horizon approach that looks, uh, in this case, 12 months ahead, and it's then rolled over a longer period of time. And for, in, in this situation, uh, also, the, the structure of the network is very uh, specific. So, like we see in, in the picture above, so it, it is also possible to deal with models that have very, very specific uh, constraints. Um, they can be formulated uh, as easily uh, as the, the well-structured constraints that we've seen in the beginning of, uh, of this presentation. Um, so a next example is uh, optimized supply chain design. This is an example where um, different choices have to be made uh, about how the supply chain will, will be um, organized based on, uh, well, different modalities of transport or based on uh, uh, number of periods or only specific periods like the summer period and also based on different choices of the products that have to be in the network. So, the overall uh, design of the supply chain is depending on all these factors and in the end, uh, the solution can be visualized uh, using uh, such a network object. And uh, this can be then specialized uh, with, for example, uh, maps that show bubble, uh, bubbles uh, at uh, different uh, locations, just to give an idea about the size of, uh, of the facilities that have been chosen there, or uh, in order to show uh, the, all the customer points that have been, that, that are to be serviced by uh, the, the chosen facilities. Uh, another example which is kind of different is uh, an example in the area of general energy network uh, planning. 
in this situation um, different kind of facilities have to be located for example uh, gas plants or uh, NGL uh, plants or power plants or refineries and all these facilities together they should work in a, in a system that, that uh, satisfies uh, demands uh, at, at the national level like we see here. In this example so uh, it is possible to visualize the network layers so if we would only like to see certain uh, types of facilities for example we can make choices uh, in a selection object and only visualize those parts of the network and also once we do that we can again uh, choose different arcs and then show more information about those arcs using other types of uh, objects like we see on the left. Um, of course it is also possible in these kind of situations to uh, zoom in the network and also to build different kind of um, uh, graphical functionality like for example we would like to uh, be able to uh, navigate through the network uh, node by node. For example, uh, a node can be chosen and for that chosen node we can show all the incoming uh, streams and all the outgoing streams and from here we can then either shift to one of the destination points or one of the um, to the source points and in this way continue this process and move from one node to another and uh, inspect uh, the solution uh, over a path in the network. Another example that I would like to present here is maybe uh, a bit uh, different in the sense that here we do not deal directly with arcs and nodes, but we have um, we have a number of uh, plants that can be uh, expanded or new plants can be added in order to satisfy in this case demand for uh, certain uh, energy efficient systems for the building uh, industry. And uh, what is uh, interesting in this situation is that uh, the problem it was very, very large and also the mixed integer formulation is difficult to solve. So the focus here is not that much on uh, just solving one instance, but actually what we mentioned in the beginning. The problem is to let the user, to give the user the choices to, to make selections, what is allowed and what is not allowed as locations uh, for the plants or new plants, what is allowed with respect to uh, expanding the capacity and then solve for that situation and then repeat this process uh, for many scenarios. So basically in this case the demand and supply uh, network structure looks like this. It's pretty simple in itself but uh, resulting in a quite uh, challenging the mixed integer optimization problem. So we have either new plants or we have existing plants that can be shrinked or expanded and they have to serve a large number of um, uh, demand points. So this is a kind of a capacitated location allocation model which op with options for expansion of existing capacity but also a number of uh, additional side constraints. So <coughs> what I would like to mention about this is that uh, so the, the, the overall goal was to provide an application that supports the boardroom uh, analysis. And in this case, so the requirements are, okay, what happens if we would like to do a what-if analysis? For example, consider or don't consider specific uh, existing plans or allow, don't allow location at new plan, of new plans select specific location choices allowing for new plans and tune in the accuracy of the solution process and also allow the group uh, to interact with the model so visualize the results, compute some KPIs, 
change the data and rerun and also establish the relationships uh, between different investment levels that have to be made. So this kind of situation is, uh, I, th I think this kind of situation comes closer to uh, the use of optimization in the context of uh, prescriptive analytics and um, well also uh, how that can help in decision support decision making. Um, so I hope by this I gave you a reasonable picture of uh, the model building in AIMS, uh, how AIMS can help in visualizing the results and also um, dealing with uh, optimization issues like conservative and complexity. Um, I would like to add that uh, so AIMS in the end uh, has a goal to provide an integrated and an interactive modeling system also a uh, collaboration and deployment platform by using AIMS Pro and the web user interface and in the end to support the complete optimization chain and we think that this is in line with uh, uh, where uh, the data driven managers are headed nowadays according to a recent review namely that uh, data visualization, simulation and scenario development, analytics applied to business processes and mathematical optimization are gaining in uh, importance compared with, uh, for example, standardized report or historic trend analysis that used to be popular since uh, uh, till uh, a few years ago. So um, using uh, the AIMS options, we are trying to support this kind of uh, development uh, and to be in line with what we see uh, uh, as demand uh, for uh, software tools in the market. Uh, now I would like to thank you very much for your attention and uh, also allow some time for possible questions. Please feel free uh, to uh, send any further questions to Ovidio or to our support uh, uh, email ad uh, address um, and uh, Ovidio, uh, can you please wrap it up? Yes, so um, thank you again for your attention and again if you have uh, questions you can always drop me an email. Before closing this webinar we would like to announce uh, our next web AIMS webinar in this series which will be uh, about uh, the AIMS uh, free solver and it will be presented by our colleague Mars Lunting uh, on July 15 and please note that in this case we will have just one webinar at this time moment in these three regions so it's the same uh, the same time but in three different re regions so uh, with respect to the European uh, uh, countries we will have basically only the webinar in the afternoon at 5 p.m. thank you again for your attention goodbye <laughs>